Day four. With each day comes a new challenge. As the bond grows tighter between Chase, Luke, and Stephen, the blue ocean waters await the early adventures of the day. Thus far in their 10-day journey, fears have been faced head on, inspiration found in places unexpected, and it becomes clear that growth will come if they reach for it. The adventure that day for our morning was to go spear fishing. Bro, I'm about to shoot up some fish. Real excited about the opportunity to get out, get on the reef, and try out that Hawaiian sling, see if we could get some fish. I got a crazy buddy who, uh, he told me this story about he found a human leg one time <laughs> when he was when he was spear fishing. spear fishing. So he called the sheriff's department and they went out and checked it out. I guess I don't think he ever followed up about it, but <laughs> he's Damn, like, it was man. so gnarly, dude. <laughs> One breath, one drop, one shot. With spearfishing, failure is easy. A former national champion, Kimmy Werner, explains the challenges of her sport to the guys, and that by aiming farther than you think you can, you will achieve that much more. It's gonna look really easy from the surface. They're gonna be everywhere, but I think you're gonna find that they kind of know exactly how far away to stay. So you guys ready to get in and give it a try? Yeah, ready, ready to Definitely. rock and roll. Let's do it. Let's go, okay. let's shoot some fish. We started out with something really, really simple, which was just dive down probably six to eight feet and try to do some spear fishing. The trick is you have to dive down and sit on the reefs and see when they kind of slow down and come to a settling point, and then you shoot at them. I couldn't do that. A lot of times when you're excited to shoot a fish, you're gonna kind of charge after it a little more and burn a lot of your oxygen. I'm trying to, you know, twist up a spear and then hold it, and you're using the energy in your arms to hold this spear. And at that point, it's immediately, I look up and there's the surface. It seems like an eternity to get back up to the top. I'm feeling all this pressure on my ears, like my eardrums are about to blow, I'm running out of breath, and all I wanted to do was just let the spear go, and hopefully, you know, I can get lucky. The crazy thing is that, watching Kimmy, it looked really easy. These were the tasty ones that people here fry up and eat. She just swam down, laid on the bottom, ambushed the fish. She looked like a complete pro. That's exactly what she is, and that's what she showed us. I was beginning to, to start to see a theme with the people that we were meeting out here and what brings them the most happiness and joy. And with Kimmy, it was just so evident where her happiness was. I think we went out with the idea that we're gonna get a lot of fish and we're gonna spear a lot of fish, and it didn't go like that at all. It was the hardest thing I've ever had to do. That was tough. Didn't have any luck with spear fishing. Didn't catch anything, didn't even come close. How was it? Drank a lot of Hawaiian water out there. You know, we got shut out. The fish shut us out. Here comes Kimmy, she gets up on the boat and she pulls up her catch and she had probably like six to eight fish on it. it ended up being a lot harder than I think I expected and probably the guys expected. Well, yeah. that didn't pan out. After fishing all day, the only appetite you can work yourself up for is fish. Dude, let's go buy some fish and cook it tonight. Let's get some fish. I'll be damned if I'm not having fish tonight, man. <laughs> we dined like kings that night, hunt fish. Store-bought, but <laughs> it's still fish. The boys and I, we had a little discussion about uh, failure. I mean, after all the skydiving and success after success, it was kind of <laughs> interesting to see the day be a little different, you know, kind of be on its head. Coming back, we didn't have that, yeah, feeling. And so, for us, it was. It was our first day of, of failure. They called it catching, wouldn't be fishing, right? Right. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> so we struck out today. With a younger brother, Aaron, who has achieved tremendous success as a professional football player, Luke Rogers has begun to realize that true failure is never trying to reach those dreams. That's all you, dude. Mm -hmm. Chef gets the best piece. All right, check, check, check. It wasn't exactly how we planned it today, but things turned out good. Spearfishing with Kimmy was fantastic. She really followed her passion. I and mean, that was pretty inspiring today. The things that I want to do and the dreams that I have inside me, those are things that can be achieved as well. And a lot, I think a lot of times life is just about trying. You know, I'm ready to start working a job that I'm passionate about and doing something that I love. We're gonna get after life. We're gonna get after it tomorrow. Day five. The 10-day journey is at the halfway point. The day begins with a fresh start. The failure of yesterday is erased by the possibility of today. 
So our, our next adventure really was to go rock climbing. We saw where we were gonna go first on a nice little hike up through this canyon to get up to the face where we were gonna climb the rocks. come out through the trees and then we're, we're like hacking through overgrown grass on the path and just climbing up and up and up. It was probably a good two miles of a hike. At some points we even hooked up to ropes and scaled some walls, scaled some rocks to get up to the main rock that we were going to climb. So I guess it was a pretty good warm up to kind of get us ready for, for the big dude, the big rock. I was a little nervous because I hadn't really climbed before. I had climbed, I got a climbing wall in college and had been pretty bad at it. You know, I knew that it just wasn't my thing. and I don't like heights. Uh, you guys are gonna have a good time today. If you're cool. afraid of heights, we like to say, this is either gonna cure you of that affliction or completely reinforce it, yeah. one of the two. <laughs> yeah. I have never done rock climbing before. And I got some friends that are always trying to get me to go rock climbing, and I never take them up on that opportunity. So for me, I was really amped to get up and do this. Chase is doing the business right now, man. Chase made the rock climb look pretty easy. He had no problem shimmying up the rock. He got up there in just a few minutes. <laughs> it was a breeze for him. All right, I'm giving you some slack to get over the top. Once I pull myself over the ledge and look down at the bottom, and Luke and Steve, and, and they're looking up, they're like, yeah, all right, man. Nice job, Chase. Woo! Nice. Way to rock it. All right, now it's your turn, you know? Let's see what you guys can do. You ready, man? Yeah, I guess as ready as I'll ever be. I remember looking at it and saying, where are the rivets? Where are the holes? What am I gonna grab onto? He struggled. It was tough, you know? I was peeking over the edge, making sure that, you know, he was making his way up, and you know, he was taking his time. Push hard with your left foot. Yeah. There you go, Steve. I was just really happy that I didn't give up. I made it through. I kind of weathered the storm a little bit and uh, found my way up to the top. Nice, brother. Oh. Yeah. <sighs> Dude. Stand up. That was intense, view. bro. Yeah. Oh. Intense. So Luke was the third one to have to make it up this cliff. We knew Luke didn't have high hopes for getting up the mountain and uh, didn't have a lot of self-confidence at that moment. <laughs> All right, false start, false start. I'm a bigger guy, like I, yeah, I'm a tall guy and um, I have a lot of mass to pull up the rock. And I had all these thoughts going around in my head. I don't know where to put my foot. Steve and I are up on top of the ledge. At this point, it's like, Luke has to get up this. We're into the trip now. This is the moment that we need all three of us up on this ledge. And I started to focus, started to listen to my guide and about where'd be good places to put my hands and my feet. Dude, yeah. Luke's doing it right now, bro. Right, foot, yeah. right where it was, there you go. <sighs> Suck your hips in. I got up almost to the top and maybe the last like 10 feet were the hardest. So wanna go right? <laughs> no, you're going right up over top of the edge. Right acres, up to right us, towards straight towards to us. Down. You know, there's something mental about being so close and yet still so far away and so far up. Uh-oh, here's my foot. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I got uh, you, big You're guy. okay, you you're okay. okay. It's sort of this weird paradox where you know you're hitched in and you know you're held up, but you still feel like you're holding on for your, for your life. I got back on the rock though and kept trying to get to the top of that rock. Yes, he's got it. And sure enough, he, he's there, he's there. His head is, you know, he's come up and that guy pulls himself up on the ledge and I think that was a real defining moment in our trip so far. Nice. Nice job, dog. There was a point where, you know, at the bottom of the rock, I didn't think I could do it. I was pretty sure I couldn't do it, but you don't know what you can do until you try. And for me, it was about getting up on that rock and trying. So there was a pretty good sense of satisfaction. The fact that the three of us got to stand up on that ledge together and overlook the coastline, it wouldn't have been the same if there was one guy left on the bottom. A little bit better than uh, fishing yesterday, eh? Yeah, <laughs> man. I remember we all turned to each other and just said, you know, do you know how lucky we are? I mean, look around. And there's a lot of takeaways for me. There's a lot of things to do with persistence, being okay with failing at things, and you know, maybe just allowing yourself the space in the room to fail and then from that failure to grow. I think we set a goal and we achieved it, the three of us, and we won. We won, you know, in my opinion, we won that day. So how do we get down? We never discussed that part. Yeah, how, 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 do, we, how do we get down from here? We didn't talk about that.
heading off to Maui. For stay-at-home father Chase, bartender Luke, and salesman Steven, the past five days on Oahu began a metamorphosis. Now they've reached a turning point, arriving on Maui. They are no longer strangers, but a band of brothers with a shared goal to get their lives back on track. With a new island as the backdrop in the home stretch of their journey, the time is now to shed their cocoons and truly learn to fly. Here we are, just pulling up to our new pad in Maui. Thank you, Woo! Wow. Good. This will work. Beautiful. First day in Maui. Everything else. Good. Blue Ribbon Windsurfer, champion stand-up paddler, big wave pioneer. Together with partner in crime Laird Hamilton, Dave Kalama re-established the relevance of stand-up paddle as a competitive sport. Kalama's feats on the ocean define the unique combination of daredevil spirit and marine sage that characterizes the true Hawaiian waterman. Today, the guys will get a chance to learn how the best become the best. We meet up with Dave Kalama, renowned waterman. Here I am at 47, and all I want to do is get in the water and play. It drives me, it makes life fun, it makes life interesting. I love it. Dave set us up with some paddle boards. I didn't really know what to expect. I'd never tried it before, never done it. The waves that we paddled out into were intimidating. It was very choppy, very rough. The ocean's starting to get, you know, pretty turbulent. I think you would like kind of catch a little break with a wave pushing you and then a wave would come in this way and knock you off. You're basically maintaining your balance the best you can, which you know, for some of us is more easy than others. That was pretty tough to do at first, but you know, we, we made it through the channel, uh, got out into the open water. By the time we finally got out there, I mean, you feel like you're way, way out there. All right, where is everybody? By that point, I just start booking it. You know, I'm lucky, I'm a smaller guy, I'm on a bigger board. Chase didn't ask a lot of questions. He seems like the kind of guy that uh, learns a lot through observing. Chase on the paddle board kind of sprinted ahead. He, uh, he got the hang of it real quick. Bro, it's so much easier on your feet. What? It's not paddle boarding. I got a little bit frustrated, you know, because I wanted to just like get up and get going, and I'm seeing Dave, you know, who didn't even have his hair wet the entire time. Steven started out a little apprehensive, but flourished pretty quickly and started catching some swells and kind of catching up to Chase. Yep, keep paddling, keep paddling. Those guys were a little better at this than I was. I just start paddling real easy. Man, I think I might have fallen, you know, 80 times. Oh. I fell a lot. It ain't the last time it's gonna happen, Luke. I know he was frustrated and nobody likes to fall in a lot. Yep, go ahead and stand up. There was a lot of times that I kind of wanted to, you know, throw in the towel, but I wasn't gonna let myself do that. And I don't think Dave was gonna let me do that either. Don't worry, buddy. Be patient, try not to get too frustrated, you'll get it. Coming from an athletic family with one brother the reigning NFL MVP and the other the starting quarterback at Vanderbilt, Luke Rogers' athletic success came not on the gridiron, but on the hardwood. Dave just came up alongside me and just talked me through it and said, you know, hey Luke, you're at the free throw line. Back to the free throw line. I wanted to get him in that headspace where he was on the free throw line and you need to calm yourself down and get your composure. That's where I want you to be at the free throw line. It seemed to be effective, because all of a sudden he stood a little taller, he owned that space, and, and he did it. He relaxed a little bit. All the way up, Luke. Commit to that last little bit. Nice, Luke. There it is, buddy. He spent the time, he hung out with me, and made the difference in me really feeling like I succeeded at something that was very difficult. <laughs> That's what I love about Luke, is, is the fact that he is just so determined. He's not that type of guy that will, you know, wave the arm and say, take me in, take me in, I'm done, I'm done. He stuck with it, and we ended up paddle boarding uh, six miles. That's what I'm talking about. You know, I was surprised that Dave used the analogy of basketball, and that's a credit to him. Like, he took something that was relevant to me, and he was able to talk me to a place where, you know, I believed I could do it, and I did. I kept thinking to myself, this is like an icon. To be taking us, you know, amateurs out here is just every surfer's dream. It's funny because all three of us fell in the water quite a few times, but Kalama, man, not once. What I get to do on a daily basis and the experiences that I have had, they are priceless. 
You're gonna look back on your life and you're not gonna look at how big your bank account was. You're gonna look at what you did. How much fun did you have? Because we're not here forever, so you better make the most of it. After spending more time falling in the water than they had ever hoped, the guys all agree on a preferred aspect of their next activity, staying dry. These ATVs, they got a little giddy up, so you hit that gas and you're on it immediately, you know? They told us these things were incapable of rolling. We kind of took that to heart and really pushed the limits. We're ripping through this sugarcane field and we're just bouncing around all over the place and, and tearing up this path. This is a great driver. He looked like a stunt driver out there. You know, he got up on two wheels. I mean, he looked like he was in his element, if he ever was in his element. We definitely had some competition out there and trying to cut each other off or just trying to go faster than the next man. It was just such a perfect ending to the day right there where you're dirty, you're sweaty, and you're doing it with your buddies, you know? So much fun, just so much fun. Day eight, the trip's most treacherous waves await Stephen, Luke, and Chase. Ho'okipa Beach is the setting for their final surf session and a chance to ride with former professional surfer, Buzzy Kerbox. We were able to, to get out there with, with Buzzy, who's, who's a legend in his own right, and, and uh, charge some of those waves. You know, Ho'okipa was the most difficult place I surfed. Extremely difficult. You know, I think we really gave it our all and left it all out there in the water. Buzzy was, he was great, you know. He was very encouraging and supportive. Felt like the fact we all got out of there, got out of there alive, made it a great day. So after having a really good, challenging surf session with Buzzy, we decided to load up the bikes onto the Jeep and head up to the top of the volcano and come down the mountain on our bikes. On an island known for its consistent 80 degree temperatures, the guys are unprepared for what lies ahead on their mountain biking adventure. Nearly two miles above the crescent-shaped beaches below, the climate has changed. It's 82 down at the ocean, and all of a sudden we're at the top of this mountain. It's 45 degrees, raining, cold, wet, windy. It's a volcano, you know, so we're talking lava rock. It was like mountain biking on marbles. The top of that trail was tough. It's just sharp, jagged, loose dirt, sand, and then like huge rocks. We came down through that sort of top summit area of the mountain. We started getting into a nice groove and some really fun straightaways. We got Steven and Luke coming down behind me. Coming in, Path opened up with some really fun riding. Up until this point, we are having the best ride ever. I mean, we're firing on all cylinders. And then, I don't know what happened. The map is in the back of us, Steven saying, let me grab it. Okay. We had this map that we were supposed to follow to be done before sunset. So wait, we're right, we're right here right now, right? Yeah, yeah. I think we're at this little come as far. So, so we gotta, gotta go down here. Far. We got at least like two so go that far. Yeah. With 12 miles to go and an hour of daylight, the one thing the guys can't afford to do now is slow the pace. We knew that part of that trail was impassable by mountain bike, and we had a turn off to hit. Ah, you. I guess somewhere along the way, we missed our turn. We're somewhere like in the boundary trail right now. So we ended up going through the, you know, quote, impassable area. The trip that was supposed to take a couple hours, and now was at like a four hour trip, and we probably had 30 minutes of daylight left. We're still up here, a good distance. We gotta start cruising now. Yeah. It's gonna get dark. We don't have any light. Like. Lost and without proper gear, the guys must put their trust in one another. All the fog's rolling in. It's just getting darker and darker as time goes on. You can literally only see about eight feet in front of you. And we're cruising down a volcano, you know, on a windy road with cliffs. And that got a little crazy. There are like root branches sticking out uh, of the ground. Yo, be mad careful right here, bro. Trees had fallen down. Mad careful. We we got we gotta get out of here. 
That was gnarled right there, dude. An hour into their ride down a near impassable hiking trail in darkness and mist, the guy's faith in each other has finally paid off. It looks like a gate up there. At this point, it's dark. We come out of the cloud line. We see some lights up ahead. <laughs> it felt good to be at the bottom and, and be through the mist and be through the darkness and be off those bikes. That's That was like creepy hollow, deeper creepers. <laughs> we made it. We, we beat the mountain. That was one of the most epic, dangerous, fun, exhilarating adventures that I've ever had. I just loved it. It was my favorite, hands down, my, my favorite thing that we've done on the trip so far. And we're gonna fight another day. With eight challenging days behind them, the guys take a moment to reflect on just how far they've come. So it's our last day and we want to make the best of it. What better way to cap off our trip than to check out Molokini Crater? There are so many people on both islands that told us that we hit the lottery and we hit the jackpot on this trip. Full speed ahead. We got to do things that no one gets to do. The paddle out in the surf, the mountain biking, the skydiving. I'm absolutely going to remember this trip forever. I don't think there's a way you can't. Sharing these experiences with these two other guys, it's hard not to feel like brothers. It's been great, man. Centuries ago, travelers crossed the Pacific looking for answers in the Hawaiian Islands. Now the inhabitants of this paradise have helped pass the wisdom of generations on to Stephen, Luke, and Chase. Tandem surf champion and waterman Bear Wozniak pointed them down their spiritual path. He has now returned to steer them to its conclusion. So I just want to try to get a little bit of traction and ask you guys, you know, what was it you discovered that kind of surprised you? I think my biggest thing uh, before coming on this trip was, was my job and my career. And um, I think that I've kind of resolved that it's not for me. I'm ready to, to kind of step out of that comfort zone. Wow, that's a huge thing. And, uh, and move on. I was able to confidently tell Bear and, and tell the other two guys that, you know, I'm definitely going to be leaving this job. I'm so proud of you because the hardest thing in the world is golden handcuffs. Mm -hmm. They're the hardest thing in the world to get out of because you got a comfortable living and everyone around you saying you're on the right path. Right. And to get off that railroad track is really hard to do. It never felt so great to say that with, uh, you know, such assurance. He said he could see a change in me from when we started to where I was. You know, I have a lot of dreams. I have a lot of things inside me that I feel like I want to achieve and I can't achieve, and I'm my biggest critic, 100%. The pressure that I feel like is on my life is from me. It's not from anybody else. It's okay to fail. I failed a lot. I failed a lot of things on this trip. But how do we take these experiences and some of the failures and the successes we had, you know, because out of the failures there was a lot of success and taking those successes and translating that to our life back on the mainland. You know, maybe there's things on the other side of the ocean that, that I didn't think I could do that I can do. And it's gonna require me to fail. I can do these things that maybe I think I can't do. And I'm going to do those things. Yeah, so for me, I mentioned to you that it was gonna be something spiritual. That's what I was searching for. My journey was about deciding whether or not I wanted to expand my family. And I wasn't sure before we started this. Through the people that, that I've met and seeing the people love what they do, whether it be walking on top of water, swimming underneath water, being up in the mountains, everything, everything. It was about love. That's a simple answer right there with love, you know? And I love being a father. I'm, I'm really good at it. And I think I'd be really good at being a father to two kids. And I think I found my answer. The lessons that you've learned are like just seeds right now that have been planted and they're gonna grow and grow and grow and you're gonna gain so much more wisdom and knowledge. So I just wanna say again, what an incredible transformation I've seen in you men. And we love you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, man. Thank you very much.
This is it, man. This is the final stretch. Definitely tired and beaten up a little bit along the way, but not ready to end the trip. You know, I'm ready to reset and do it all over again with these two guys. The time that I spent with the guys and the experiences far exceeded the expectations. It's the real end right here. You really can do anything that you put your mind to. Push your limits, get outside of your comfort zone, cut the negative people out of your life, and uh, enjoy the ride. I'm Luke Rogers, and I grew up in Chico, California. It was great growing up in a small town. It was a college and town. You're not going to look at how big your bank account was. You're going to look at what you did, what mattered, how much fun did you have. Because we're not here forever, so you better make the most of it.